And now for the Bible reading. The first will be Psalm 98. Praise the judge of the world, a psalm. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with lyre, with lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar in all of it that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods cap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And the second reading, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into be to, to being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, <clears throat> and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. <clears throat> By the light of the Holy Spirit shining in our midst, open our hearts and minds, O oh God, to your word. Present now and always for the sake of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm so delighted to see all of you this morning. Usually, I'm sure on Christmas Day, you stay home with your family, open Christmas gift, and share Christmas meal. But you are here even without heat <laughs> in the sanctuary on Christmas Day. But I'm sure God would be happy to see all of us to praise the Lord on the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, that I'd like to ask you and myself is do we have a specific reason they want to give thanks and praise the Lord this Christmas? Today's scripture, Psalm 98, says, Oh, sing to the, sing to the Lord. 
a new song. For he has done marvelous things. We don't know exactly why the psalmist wrote the Psalm 98. But it's very interesting that the same statement, sing to the Lord a new song, is found in Isaiah 42. If we read Isaiah, we can understand the background of the story or prophecy. As you know, Israelites were exiled in Babylon for about 70 years. They have been waiting for the God's deliverance for many years. And even they thought they are forgotten by God. But one day, Isaiah told them that God would come and deliver them. In 539 BC, that happened. It is very strange. The strong Babylonian was destroyed by the legendary king, Syria, Cyrus. I don't know why, but he decided to allow the Jews to return to Jerusalem. So about 50,000 Jews came back to Jerusalem and began to rebuild the temple. We can imagine how excited they were. And so they scripture and tells us what the writer is telling his people. When they thought they had been forgotten by God, he says, he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the end of earth have seen the victory of the Lord. If we read New International Version, it translates God saved the God brought the salvation to all people. And that's why the, all the earth of the people were able to see what God is doing for his people. But this story tells us it's God's salvation is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. That's why he invited everybody to sing to the Lord for his marvelous, amazing grace for his people. And it's very interesting that he says, let the flood clap their hands and let the hills sing together for joy. The writer extends his call to the natural world river and the sea and the hills to join in singing, praising the Lord. That's not the end of the story. In verse 9 he says, He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. There are many people saying that the world is not right. And many people complaining that God is doing nothing for the oppressed. But he said, God is the king, and the God is the Lord of the world. So he will be back. Well, it's very interesting. In 1719, English hymn writer David Watts wrote, Joy to the world. He wrote that song based on Psalm 98. As you know, he says in the hymn that heaven and nature sing to praise to the Lord. As the writer of the Psalm 98 says, 
what is saying the same thing. It's not just a human being, all of us, but also he invites the universe, natural world, join in singing, praising God. As you know, in the Bible, we noticed whenever Israelites experienced God's amazing love, they wrote a new songs and praised the Lord. That's what Moses and Miriam did, and Hannah and Elizabeth and Mary also did the same thing. They praised the Lord for his amazing grace. Every day, God is at work in our lives and among us. That's why the flood claps their hands and the sing and the hills sing for joy. Have you ever noticed the natural world is praising God every day? Again, my question is, have you found any reason for us to praise the Lord this Christmas? I'm so grateful to Ben and our choir for their annual Christmas cantata. I really like to praise the Lord because I have been dreaming of having a children's choir in our church for six years. But last Sunday, 10 children joined in singing with our choir. I think, of course, you know, Ben and Julia and other people really work hard encouraging children to sing with the choir. But I still believe that it's God's grace. This is what God has done for us. So I wish I could write a new song and sing this morning praising God. Why do you think we cannot see what God is doing for us. John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of the world, of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. If we recognize that Jesus is with us as the light, we can see what God is doing in our life. If we recognize Jesus' presence among us, whatever happens in us, we still can praise the Lord. Christmas Day is an opportunity for us to praise the Lord for sending us his precious son, Jesus Christ, it is also a day that we look forward to what God has in store for our future. We don't have to wait for Christmas to praise the Lord. We can praise, give thanks to the Lord anytime. As we get up each morning, may God open our spiritual eyes to see what God has done and doing. May God fill us with excitement about what God is going to do tomorrow and in the future. May we sing a new song when we see God's great love and his faithfulness in our lives, in our church, in our community. Sing a new song and make a joyful noise to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
on this sacred and holy day. The earth rejoices because you sent us Emmanuel, God with us. This morning we celebrate your steadfast love and faithfulness. Help us to make a joyful noise as we remember the marvelous things you have done. Through your son's example, we give of ourselves to make your love real in this world. Help us to feel your presence on you and help us to live out Jesus' call to treat others with equity. Amen.